Hello everybody, this is Niklas Huschenbeet and welcome to another game analysis from the Metropa Cup where I'm playing right now. Round number four, we played against the Czech Republic and I played against experienced Grandmaster Cipnek Racek. Sorry if I bungled the pronunciation there. Who has a rating about the same as mine, as you can see, 2582 versus my 2571. I was playing with the white pieces and we can get to the game. For those of you who haven't seen any of the game analysis before from this tournament, Metropa Cup is a team competition, 10 teams from Europe. Germany is one of them and I'm playing on board one of the four players in the team. So let's begin, e4, c5. And he played only for a second time in his life, as far as I could see from the database, the Sveshnikov variation here, e5, before he had played it against Nepomniachtchi. But I felt like he might go for this, so I looked at it briefly. And I decided to surprise him here by going knight d5, which I had not played before. And it's an interesting sideline. It gives quite complex positions. So black has to take because I threatened knight c7. Takes, takes. Knight goes back. And now a4 to gain some space. And also because I would like to bring the knight back by a3 to c4. So it makes sense to already play a4 before Black plays a6. Now bishop e7, bishop e2, castle, castle, f, no, knight e7. And now bishop d2, f5, this is all pretty standard. Black has more pawns here on the king side, so he will push these pawns forward, whereas white has more pawns on the queen side, and he will try to play on this side of the board. This is just in general to keep in mind, play on the side of the board where you have more pawns. So this is what the plans are for both sides. And as you can already see, by nature, that means that I have to be careful of my king because this is where black will push his pawns forward where he has the majority and that means he can possibly open up my king with his pawns. So I played a5, I was still in my preparation here and this is actually the point why to put the bishop on d2 in this line so that after a6 knight a3 the pawn is still protected with the bishop on e3 black could take the pawn. A6 is the main move, and after knight e3, black has many options, but instead he played knight f6, which is also in my file, <laughs> but I only realized this afterwards, in my file it says c4, and then a6, knight c3, and just play from there, normal game, and play b4, and so on and so forth. But I thought during the game that he had blundered, and he told me also that he had missed bishop e3, because suddenly he has a problem to defend this pawn. But it turns out that black has different ways to get comp good compensation. And I think that c4 is a maybe more practical way to play this. So instead of bishop e3, c4. So here he goes bishop d7. Now I have to take with the knight on a7 because if I take with the bishop, he can take my knight and then take my bishop. So knight takes a7, f4 and bishop b6, attacking the queen. Now you play queen e8, which is interesting. Also possible is queen b8 attacking the knight, I have to go back and now to play f3 I have to take with the pawn because if I take with the bishop my knight would fall and after g takes f3 play bishop d8 try to exchange this important dark square bishop white doesn't allow that bishop e3 now black can take an a5 with one pawn back white is maybe better but difficult position to play because the king obviously is weak now that the pawns in front of it have been destroyed the pawn structure. So this was another option, but he played queen e8 and now the problem for me in this position is my knight. My knight cannot come back. On the other hand, he can also not attack it and I'm pawned up. So I felt pretty good here actually. Here I played f3. Maybe I should go c4 immediately. It's difficult to say. I just felt f3 a very natural move to stop his pawns coming closer to me and also taking away squares from the knight. Now you play bishop d8, he wants to trade the bishops. And I allowed that. I played c4, which I was happy with, but the computer was, was not that happy about this move. Maybe I should go queen to d2. And the point is that now after takes, takes here, at least black cannot go e4 because the pawn would be hanging on f4. But he can do something else, maybe king h8. It's a very difficult position. Because I'm a pawn up, but my knight cannot come back easy into the game. And black always has these ideas to get something going against my king on the king side. So who knows? 
very unclear. Let's see it again. C4 takes, takes. Now queen d8. Interesting move, and I expect this move, but the computer points out that e4 simply is also strong. I thought e4, I put my queen on d4, beautiful square for the queen, but the problem is once again my knight. And now whenever I play knight b5, black will just take and I will have triple pawns on the b-file and my extra pawn really doesn't count for anything and the black knight will be the strong knight on these squares. So I cannot bring the knight back. And then black just plays like this, rook a8, gets all his pieces into the game. Computer says it's equal. Maybe it's even easier to play for black already because like I said with my knight on a7 it's kind of awkward. So this was also possible. Queen d8 attacking the pawn and I play queen b3 defending the pawn and also having some ideas on this diagonal to play c5 and always have some tactical motives there as we'll also see in the game. Here I expected him to go king h8 when I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was thinking about sacrificing a pawn on c5 giving the pawn back to have a pass pawn on the d file. But maybe just bishop d3 is a good move because the bishop is better placed here, not allowing bishop f5 and then just go from there, also quite unclear. But knight h5, very interesting idea and I was getting a little bit nervous because I realized he has this idea of playing knight g3 in many positions and I cannot take because then I get checkmated on h2. Nonetheless, I felt like, okay, I have to do something here and I played c5 because I was afraid of something like this, that he goes knight g3, Queen h4, rook f6, rook h6, and checkmates me. And this is somewhat of a real threat. But a computer, of course, cool as he is, he just wants to play bishop d3, knight g3, rook e1, queen h4. Now, well, this is an important move now because otherwise I think the attack becomes very strong. Queen c2. And the point is that now I'm threatening to take on h7, trade queens if black takes, and then I can take the knight on g3. I'm not getting checkmate anymore. So here after rook f6, now I could take and then play bishop g6. I mean, this still looks murky to me, but computer says it's fine. So, all right, well, c5 looked logical to me and I played this fairly quickly. And here he took also quite quickly, which he regretted. After the game, he told me immediately afterwards, he realized he could have gone knight g3 and this would have been indeed a better move. I cannot take, because if I take, queen h4 is coming, I cannot stop that. If I play queen c4, there's rook f4, and queen h4 next move. And if I play queen e3, which stops the checkmate, because I can come back in between with queen g1, but the black attack is very strong. He plays e4, opens some more files, and I will not be able to defend, especially also my extra piece is on a7, so it doesn't really help me in the defense. So knight g3 is definitely a good move here. I should play rook e1, this is also what I was planning, but now just take, and I can still not take. Always the attack by black becomes very strong. So maybe I should go bishop c4, but very unclear, and maybe black's even better here. It's just, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, let's get back to the game, d takes c5. And here, this was my idea, now I can bring the back knight back into a game of knight c6 and making use of some tactics here. If black takes, I take back with check, win back the piece and have a nice pass pawn on b6. So black cannot take and he moves the queen to f6, which I had seen. And here I was quite happy. And I played, after some thinking, I played rook a7. And I was very happy with my position. Very confident here at 50 minutes on the clock against his 15 and I felt my position is winning here. But this is not so and rook a7 is actually a mistake. I have interesting alternatives. One move which is very cute is bishop a6. I did not see this move. Very interesting. Um, also quite unclear. Black can take. I think he can also do something else. Maybe he can again play knight g3 just very unclear as well but just one line to show you this craziness which can emerge here is like this knight g3 now b8 queen takes on f1 king takes <clears throat> please don't ask me why why it cannot move his queen at this point <laughs> okay we'll just agree with this uh, takes takes queen f5 and here after mass exchanges white is better in this position Okay, just a crazy line I want to show you guys. Maybe the most sane move would have been to go bishop d3 here, just to get out of this attack already. 
um, and the bishop is well placed here. And if now knight g3, I can take on a8. Makes sense to, to trade one attacker anyway and then play rook d1. And computer starts to like this position for white, but still very difficult to evaluate. As long as I don't take on g3, I don't think I get checkmated. And then maybe I can do something with the pawn on d5. I don't know. Still quite complicated. So let's see rook a7. So the pawn is black and still not take, of course, because while well, the bishop is hanging. And I'm threatening to take the pawn on b7, which cannot be defended in any good way. So I thought his only chance is to play knight g3 and do something here, but I thought this is not going to work. Well, he played it, and the more time I spent, and I spent half an hour here, 33 minutes, I realized that this is not clear at all. <laughs> and I be was becoming more and more nervous because at this point, the match was tied 1.5-1.5. One one My game was the last one still going on. All other games had been drawn, and that meant this game would decide the match. So, after a long thing, I played rookie one, which was a good decision for sure. If I take the knight, which was my original plan, then it gets very dangerous for white. First, I thought I can just go queen e3 here, and I'm up a piece. But it turns out after queen h4, rook fe1, I'm defending against mate for now, but black just plays rook a8, and again this e4 threat just breaks my neck right here. Nothing I can do. Rook takes b7, e4 just crushes me. Rook takes d7, e takes f3, and it's game over. Takes f2, queen h1, just the rooks perfectly placed on f8 and e8, and e4 cannot be stopped. So when I realized this, then I got a little bit scared here, and... I was looking at other options. One of them is to take first on a8. That makes sense to trade one attacker. And here's a cute line I want to show you guys. If black now wants to go for the kill of queen h6, that doesn't work because I can go d6 check. Bishop e6 is forced. King h8 is checkmate, of course. Bishop e6. And now I can play this. It's very cute. Bishop c4. Queen takes. Now take on f8. Now play d7 and a queen next move and I win being a rook up at least. But of course black doesn't have to do this, he can just take the rook back unfortunately. And now queen e3, but here black will just take the piece back on c6. Queen h4 first and rook c1, b takes c6 and white has to be very careful here to, to hold the balance. Actually the only way to do this is to play b7 now. And then rook b8 is bishop c4 and white holds this but just with the weak king it's so dangerous for white and very easy to go wrong so i'm glad i didn't go for this so let's see what i did i played rookie one and the problem is now that black can take the bishop and actually now take the knight because now the problem is that if i take the bishop on d7 black gives a check and gives another check and it's checkmate that's that's the main problem here that there's always this back rank issue for me followed by queen h4 and now it's also getting low on time because i had spent half an hour earlier and now i have to make another decision here and this is a really freaking difficult position um well let's see some moves so the move i played was rook takes a8 i also looked at rook e1 to defend against the issues on the first rank and now I threaten to take the bishop on d7. This would be a decent move and black should play, well he has a number of moves so queen f7 makes sense to pin the pawn and defend the bishop and now different ways to play. One would be to take on d7 to sacrifice more material and then to enter this end game where white is down a rook but black has to give a rook for the connect the past pawns and we'll actually reach an equal endgame here. So this was pretty quickly and um, well I hope it wasn't too quick but this would lead to an equal position here and the alternative would be in this position to take on a8 and to play b7. Rook b8 is forced, queen b6, now bishop e8, d takes c6, bishop takes c6, queen takes, queen takes b7, once again black equalize. So this would lead to an equal position. All right, let's see what else is there. Well, first my plan was to take on c6, but then I changed my mind because after bishop e6, 
I looked at, well, queen a3 and queen a4. Queen a3, I realized rook a8 is very dangerous for me and I shouldn't do this because the rook is coming and I don't have many defenses, defense resource, and my pawns are still too far away from queening. But queen a4 looked interesting. Now I have d1 covered, so rook a8 is not that strong. But um, I was actually afraid of rook takes a7 here, but this turns out this is better for white. Rook a8, this was um, what I was worried about. But here I didn't see c7 as a strong move, just pushed a pawn. Now queen e7, rook takes e5, there's a computer line now. And I think black has to defend this way and we reach this position where sooner or later black has to give up the bishop. And with this rook end game, which is probably ultimately a draw, but white can try a little bit. However, after queen a4, well, rook takes a7 is possible, but there's also rook a b8, which I also saw. I thought now I can go b7, threatening c7, queen d8, rook takes e5, and I thought, okay, I keep my pawns here. This is good compensation for the piece, and it is. This should be uh, around equal as well. I mean, uh, yeah, this should be equal, but maybe if one can try it's white here. That it should ultimately also be equal. Well, there was another move actually after bishop e6, which I didn't consider. Maybe this is the best try. So move queen c3, hitting both the pawn c5 and e5. And black has to find this sequence here. Takes, takes, and now e4 is a strong move to trade queens. Takes, and now we reach this endgame, which is a draw because white has two pawns and the pawn a7. Black cannot get rid of it. So this is a draw. All right, <laughs> back to the game position. So this was the game position and I thought I spotted a win. So I played rook takes a8. But then to my horror, I realized that what I had planned had a hole. So my opponent took back, of course. And here I was intending to play d takes c6 check. And the whole time, whenever I played d takes c6 check, black had to play bishop e6. But then, when I took an a, I realized he doesn't have to play bishop e6 here. He can just move the king. But let's... Okay. Let's first see bishop e6, and then we'll discuss uh, king moves. So here my pawn was, now there's also the threat of rook a1, so I need to play the queen back to d1. But now my position is, in fact, winning, because the pawns are so strong and black is not creating any threats. For example, bishop c8, b7, takes, takes, rook b8, <clears throat> and now the rook comes into a game, and here rook d6, precise move, and queen d5 is threatening rook d8, and white wins. So this is why I was getting excited, but then I realized, oh no, black can move the king, and he still has this threat of rook a1, and now it gets really funky. So <clears throat> if I take on d7, black just plays rook a1, King f2, we already know this is checkmate, but I have this idea to just give my rook. Because now, after takes king f2, it's not checkmate anymore. After queen h4, g3, if now queen takes h2, I can take the rook. But, in this position, the problem is black just moves his rook anywhere. This is protected and I will not uh, queen. And now there's still the mating attack coming of queen h4, so this wins for black. There's also another move here, which is b7. Now the same thing happens, and this is actually what my opponent saw as well. But here is something very fantastic. In this position, we both thought that, well, to be honest, I didn't calculate this exact line. I calculated another one, which we'll see in a moment. But we both thought that this is a draw. Well, okay, my opponent wasn't too sure. I thought this is a perpetual. <clears throat> and it is a perpetual, even though black has to be precise here, because white has this try to move the king to c1, with the idea to bring the queen in between. <clears throat> but now black has to play his only move queen f1, so after queen d1 he can go queen c4. And it is a draw. After king b1, that would be a mistake. Bishop f5 and queen a6 is checkmate. Next move. <clears throat> so king d2. Queen d4 check, and now again, the king cannot go here because this would be checkmate on the other side of the board. Um, so king c1 and queen c2 also doesn't change much. 
queen f2 and again the king cannot step forward because this would lead to a checkmate right here so it would be a draw but as the computer tells us after g3 black has a win here which is to take on g3 and then go queen h1 which is just ridiculous because white queens with check but now black calmly plays king e7 and turns out black does not have a single good check e5 is protected and there is simply no check and black is threatening checkmate himself so black wins here because white has to give up the queen to defend against the checkmate and then it's just dumb material <clears throat> so <laughs> that's uh, kind of unfortunate so let's come back to the starting position so this was the position with me to move and another move i looked at was b7 and here the same thing happens i give my rook but here this uh, what we just saw doesn't work because here white queens and um, then he can do something here he just doesn't take on c6 now maybe he plays d6 instead something along these lines or maybe oh yeah this is cute check this out so he plays d6 here king f8 now queen bishop e8 and now for example queen g8 ha huh, this is cute okay now here white wins but black has a different way to win here in this position and sorry if this was too quick uh just let me show this one more time queen g8 takes and this is checkmate so let's come back to this position instead of queen h4 here black well this would be a draw because of g3 black can do this perpetual again but here is this one rook e3 <laughs> uh, also threatening queen h4 threatening the queen white can queen with check but black just plays king f7 and that's it d takes c6 rook takes b3 queen takes b3 and now bishop e6 and black's up a piece and wins so that's bad news as well and by the way of course i didn't see rook e3 i saw this drawing line which i showed earlier where black takes on h2 so the best move in this position <clears throat> would be to go rook e1 <clears throat> but uh, then black goes c4 queen takes c4 queen f7 and he will be up a piece here with best play and he should be able to convert in the end game so this is also lost for white this would be the best thing to objectively even though the other moves would be a better try but <clears throat> i played an even better move the single best move i could do here in this position which is uh, i accepted a draw offer my opponent had given to me by playing rook takes a8 because he was also very unsure about this positions with d takes c6 and b7 if there's a perpetual because if there isn't then he might also lose and he didn't see this mating idea with queen h1 which is of course very difficult to see and i accept the draw offer and the match ended 2-2 so i was a bit lucky there given that in the in the final position i'm lost but of course it's incredibly difficult to see and we both had five minutes or so i think i had four minutes when i accepted and he had maybe six or seven so yeah incredibly difficult but beautiful variations study like win for black there and amazing variations i felt like i would be winning but the computer showed that ultimately i didn't have a big chance to win at all actually um difficult difficult position his counterplay of knight g3 just proved to be very strong and after all, king safety always comes first, and this is what we also saw in this game. So fantastic game, it was a lot of fun to play, and I hope it was also a lot of fun for you guys to see the variations. If you have any questions, let me know, and if you enjoyed the video, then please subscribe for future content, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.